Adult audio of the Love, Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, both here tonight from Arrested Development. <laughs> Premieres uh, nice. this, it's this Sunday on uh, Fox, yes? Yes, it is. 9.30? That's correct, Adam. Fox is uh, a little behind on the premieres because of the baseball, right? Also correct. And, uh... Tell us about this uh, new show of yours. Well, Jason, good evening. Um, it is about um, a uh, a very rich, dysfunctional family uh, that has to learn how to live middle class because daddy gets put in the pokey and basically the comedy kind of um, spews out from there. Um, Nobody's ever had a job, a real job in the right. family. So. Right. So what kind of work do you guys end up doing? Well, um, cooking math. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, very that's actually a, that's going to be a two-parter. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's the, coming up. Yeah, the antics and soup. Very special. Yeah. 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 Two parters. They're very special. <laughs> they were originally going to go with, um, you know, the show just kind of being, uh, you know, a, a nice documentary about the hip hop band Arrested Development. And we couldn't. They could not managers. get the rights. Ended up making it about a family, and just they kept the name for some Interesting reason. Interesting producer, executive producers. Yeah, Brian Grazer and uh, Ron funny. Howard. Well, they're big they're hip-hop <laughs> fans. Huge. A couple and, of lightweights. Mm. And I, I didn't know, uh, I'm reading here that uh, Jason Bateman's uh, father-in-law is Paul Anka. Yes, yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. God. Canadian, but he he's, is, he's a good he? guy. Still Easy. makes a good living? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Will, you're... Yeah. Oh. Will's Canadian? You didn't say filthy Canadian this time, which is good. Dirty's usually what I go to, yeah. but Pops might be listening. I sent out my resume on purpose. Is uh, is uh, Paul still uh, making the scene? Paul actually uh, makes a uh, very tidy living uh, traveling the globe, yeah. entertaining the people. Does he hit Brant Branson, uh, Branson, Missouri? I don't think he can go back there anymore. You heard oh. about that, huh? Yeah. yeah. No, he yeah, can't go back to anywhere. Ugly over there. Mm -hmm. You heard about the Ank the Anka Branson uh, incident for us? <laughs> Smirnoff is still smarting. Yeah. It yeah. sounds weird. Did it involve yeah. the Osmonds? It, it, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I thought so. It was an all-out <laughs> race war with the Osmonds. It was white against super white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I'm trying to... Oh, hell. No one no one is listening knows, even knows who Paul Ank is. Didn't he write... Uh, did Did he write... Uh, like wait, Who did, like, the Tonight Show theme? In Paul Anka. And, and is, it just made millions off of that? Continues. Today. Really? Yeah. But don't, don't, so. they, don't they have a new theme now? Yeah, but not in Southeast Asia. They they, ah. they, uh, they still go with the old one. See, this is what we should all hope to do, which is you come up with a quick jingle. It gets on a show. The show runs for 25 years. You get a big, fat paycheck I think, I thought every that month. I was just something that they sort of used as a storyline in sitcoms and TV. No, no, no people, stuff. I mean... I, I Alan mean, Thick. Alan, Alan Thick. Wrote Different Strokes and Facts of Life. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. money. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, I always heard that Anka just uh, basically got rich off of that. That and put your head on my shoulder and my way and oh, I wrote my son way. of a bitch. Yeah, I could yeah. go on. Yeah, smart. Mm-hmm. And you married uh, his uh, daughter. I'm yeah, guessing, right? I mean, I figured it was a good Mental move. Note. Uh, yeah. More piano lessons for my kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> or or <laughs> just have them seek out a, a child of somebody who knows how to play the yeah, piano. Yeah, yes, that's a good note too. Yeah, plastic surgery and brown just, nosing. Honey, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, no offense. I mean, no, L not 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 taking. No worry. No, okay. No, no. Okay. No. All right. All right. So this Sunday, nine thirty, Fox, and uh, like I said, now Fox. Well, the the series ended on uh, Saturday. I guess so. Fox has uh, begun, right? Fox, all the uh, new new uh, airings. Of the yeah, show. they had a little bit of a um, a lackluster performance um, last Monday. With, you guys are going to end there with Spin and yeah, Joe Millionaire, but talk about that's, that's no, no. But I am not done yet. I'm going to spin it now. <laughs> right. Um, I think the problem was there is that the women that watch Skin and. Uh, Joe Millionaire, they weren't watching baseball where where most of their promos were. Right. So what we've got now is a, uh, I don't know, a re-up, a relaunch, yeah. I guess. It's going to be a juggernaut. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. And you, you uh, finished working on uh, <laughs> Starsky and Hutch? I did. Who were you? 
I was Vince Vaughn's bitch, basically. Um, we play the bad guys, and he's the the leader, and I'm sort of the the science side of our partnership. We we develop a a cocaine that can't be sniffed out by dogs. Ooh. This is a uh, set in the mid '70s. Um, when they and, invented that, but you know, yeah. right. cocaine came around then. No, they invented the sniffless cocaine and the and the sniffing dog. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like the smokeless so, ashtray, right? And and does does is it is it all out comedy, Starsky and Hutch? Well, uh, not to them, it's not. Uh, they are super cops, and it's all very serious business, ah, which is what makes it pretty hysterical. Choice. Yeah, the way VIP was serious. Uh. No, Drew. This actually, uh, yeah, uh, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson were pretty uh, effing hilarious uh, with how serious they took everything. It yeah, was that's great. Those guys are good, and and VIP started off serious. It's just they labeled it as a farce after people started laughing. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Right. Kind right. of by default. Serious to them. Right. Right. That's like a lot, a lot of your patients probably felt the same way. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Do you guys need a moment? Yeah. Oh, we I think many. we had. We've yeah. had them. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Natalie? Yeah? You're 20? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, I, um, I'm sadomasochist, and mm. I was just wondering, like, if it's normal and, you know, why, like, is it healthy? I mean, you know, we had a lot of fetish calls last night, too. In fact. Oh, really? And we were talking to people about how once you start going down that fetish path, you tend to kind of become... It becomes a It becomes a necessary part of it in order to function sexually. And in, in, oh, yeah. in that case, when it does, it tends to take away from intimacy and sort of distract you from the real relationship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it with a capital W, but it does... It can get in the way of healthy relationships. It's a small W. Small W. Well, mm -hmm. not wrong. Now... It's, if you're a sadomasochist, are you always dealing out the punishment, or can you be on both sides of the whip? Well, it depends. Like, I'm not an extreme, like, you know, with the whips and craziness like that. I mean, I'm, it's just, it's minor. Like, I like to tie up my, the guys, and, you know, like, them in a helpless state is, like, really attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, How about if the guy just watched TiVo and didn't seem all that interested in the world? That's kind of my move. You know, it's a passive, it's a passive attack. It sneaks up on it's, you. It's impressive and it's, it's powerless. It, and it's, it, but it's effective. They get angry. Yeah, I mean, what? I mean, if what if the guy? Do you want him struggling once you tie him up? Yeah. Well, you you like want to see him fighting? Minor, you know, nothing like where they actually bust out because that just would. You want to see that he's helpless. Yeah, and like. Were but, you were you made to feel helpless growing up yourself? Mm, not really. I mean, like. You never were hit or anything. Mm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Missed that one. Does uh, did anyone beat on you growing up? Yeah. Yeah, oh, they did. That's right. where this comes from, usually. Yeah. Oh, really? Because, like, this is, I mean, this is... and on the opposite side, I mean, I like to be held down a lot. Yeah, yeah it's, it's connected. It's so funny that the things that made you feel helpless are things that become sources of attraction and arousal later in life. And this is... Yeah, I mean, I don't actually want to hurt him or anything. No, right? I know. Just, I'm, like, a... struggling to get out. It's just... Is this a business, or is this just a hobby? Um, <laughs> no, it's just a hobby. I don't own just a, a hobby. or anything. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> or Not a website. Correct. Yeah. Can you have relationships? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been in a couple long term ones, but right. it, that's none of really them seem important to be all thing. about that at all. Yeah, but that's the important thing. Right. You They're can kind of scared off by it. Well, right. do, do you uh, do you use safe words? I always like the safe word. No, it never gets that bad that I had. Okay. To, they won't even let me tie them up. It kind of sucks like that. No, they won't. Well, I, no, it's they, like I have to yeah. imagine it mostly. I mean, once that's because I you go for times. guys. You go, go for, guys. for guys that are cops and things like that, right? Oh no! What cops? No, she goes for guys who really seem seem powerful in some way. Drew, it sounds like you might know her. Yeah, true. <laughs> I've, I've known Cops, more than a few doctors. Natalie's. But you know what seems weird to me? S and M long term S and M relationships. What happens when you have orange juice in the morning or coffee? Huh? And what happens, you, when what, happens, what happens when you have kids? Yeah, when you have kids. What happens cataracts. when you're 65? Oh, man. Yeah, right. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah. You, Think you about lose, that. You lose some I of that. I guess I'll have to get a soundproof room or something. No. Well. <laughs> Natalie, Natalie, relax. You don't. You don't sound like you're, you're too far gone, but you may be going down that trail. Yeah. I know. It's not like it's not too bad, but I ah, you kn really know that it. it came from having been physically abused by your parents. Yeah. Realize that the fact that you can't have relationships, great. You you should find a guy that can play along with you, and know that when you've been physically abused, you will tend to go for guys that seem powerful to make you 
feel safe, but those guys can become the perpetrators of further physical abuse later. So I would uh, I would immediately forget my safe word. This would be my prom. Like I I would I would yeah. immediately forget like Daffy, it. Daffy Duck trying to get in the. the cave. Yes, yes. I and I would I would probably have to get one of those like uh, quarterback wristbands that had my safe word on it, so I could just <laughs> check it every like, once uh, in a while. Sarsaparilla? Saskatchewan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going nuts. And to me, it's like, here, here, here's the ultimate safe word. I will throw you off of me into the hamper and then attack you physically with the plunger. That's how you know. What know. I mean, the universal safe word, Adam, I, I just figured it out. The universal safe word. You know it. Yeah. Oh. I'm serious. Yeah. It should just the, be I'm, I'm serious. serious. Just I've me. said this many times. Like, <laughs> as a kid, you could use the I'm serious. Like, when I was a kid... I got rolled up in a carpet once. <laughs> right. And, you know, I said, hey, it'd be funny. Take Adam. He's 10 years old. Put him in this carpet, and we'll roll him up. I had my hands by my side. I had about four foot of carpet, you know, over my head. And Sounds four like foot a cartoon. Yeah. It sucked. And then naturally, as soon as I was rolled up, people started kicking me. And <laughs> and I was like, let me out. Let me you know, I'm going nuts. Like, I felt all cla- claustrophobic. And everyone was laughing and kicking me. And then, then I yelled, I'm serious. <laughs> and everyone went, he's serious. And then they, they rolled and they out. Unrolled like, yeah, they know, like, when, you, when you're a kid, you'd get a guy in a headlock or something everything good but if he gave the i'm um, serious call that's when you had to back right. off. universal <clears throat> safe word and, and it, it is as you've an, had hardwood floors ever since as an adult nice yeah. tie-in Thank as you. an adult but it wasn't no, no. because no, it wasn't the point. wall you missed the point the point, the point, the point is now he has to do that every time he's sexual his wife that's <gasps> the, that's i gotta use the carpet, the carpet roll you roll a different right <laughs> that's right <laughs> i do it more to gain girth than i do well it's a different story <laughs> But that's a, just this girl's problem is just like the same sort of just a different way of manifesting like the same way if, if like a girl grows up or or a guy for that matter and their their mother or father is withholding they constantly go for people who are withholding yeah, yeah. if you have you if you have somebody who's absent you go for absent people right. that's right Josh yeah you're 22 I am what's up <clears throat> I actually got a question for Dr Drew all right um I do I do math probably maybe like two or three times a week and I've been mm-hmm. doing it. Uh, probably about a year now. You, you should know, first of all, that, that meth addiction, yeah. the, the majority of meth addicts do it two or three times a week. Really? No. Meth, meth is not a daily drug, typically. Not, huh? No. Okay, I guess I'm an yeah. addict. That sucks. Yeah. I don't yeah. consider myself one, but... I know. I just thought I'd alert you to what you're doing. Why, not? Why isn't it a daily drug? It, it, people can't... Uh, they, once they do it, they get really psychotic when they're doing it daily. And yeah. they just, you know, they just don't get to that point. Josh, I'd like so to see just never hear from the he people will, that do it every day. He will get there. It'll happen oh, really? if he stays with it long right. enough. But most well, people I treat are the three... It's do they need like a day on each, after each yeah, one to recover? kicking the crap out of them a little bit. Smoking or what do they do? You what smoking do you, or snorting it? Uh, I do both. Actually, it, yeah. I, I stay away from the needles just because I'm afraid of needles. But I do. Let's like, be clear. You smoke it most of the time, huh? You smoke it most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And, uh, and by the way, yeah, three three times a week can be five times a week, and a year can be mm, sixteen, seventeen months. Yeah. That's what I would anyway, say. So yeah, the question. Like the question yeah. is. But anyways, um, I, I have a I want to call her a girlfriend, but I have a girl that I I uh, you know we hook up every Service. now and then, mm-hmm. but when I'm when I'm by myself and I'm, it seems like whenever I come home and I'm high or I've been high for the last couple of days or so, I want to masturbate, but it just takes so much longer, it seems, when I've been on it, you know, lately, to actually get off. Right, you're on, you're on drugs. Yeah, is, is that why? I mean, it's, it's interesting. If you were taking Prozac and had trouble to, you know, ejaculate, he'd be like, hey, what's wrong with this horrible medicine you're giving me? Right. But uh, with speed, it's like, hey, you think could have anything to do with that? You think, yeah. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Everything goes, uh, everything is, uh, everything's like a funnel, right, to your to your uh, sack. I mean, every every drug, every every booze, every food, every, everything that goes in you just goes right to your door. <laughs> I don't, what is that? What, what is that? When it counts. When it's you know if it's going to do something significant, that's where it's going to do. Yeah, one, one I don't know why it starts way. there. What could start with it's your feet system. or something? It's a delicate system. And yes, right. it's, it, it can, it, and you will start having trouble with erection and arousal and things soon enough. All right. So, so Josh. Yeah. Josh. First off, Josh is a horrible name for a speed addict. I, <laughs> it's not. It's no. not right. Uh, here, uh, I'll, I'll Change correct your name part. to Kurt. No, 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 no. Josh was first a marijuana addict. I was. Huh. Yeah. So, ah, well, Josh is a great name for see, a pothead. Which is this a return I'm caller? No, because all, all, pretty much all speed addicts start with pot. I and did. Pot, and, and pot, I'll tell Josh's story without ever having met him. Pot started in his mid-teens probably, loved it, went on for six, eight years with that, 
if it had kept working, he'd still be smoking pot, but it stops working after about six, right. eight years. Yeah. Starts getting depressed, well, start looking for solutions to that, finds his way to speed, someone gives it to him, pow, everything's okay again, and off they go with the speed. Oh, you forgot he kills himself by driving <laughs> his mom's LeBaron over a cliff. <laughs> That's Wait, it. but Adam, I think you think what? that Josh is a bad name for a speed it is. for meth it's because... Good for him. It's good for him. you think that he's in, like in a trailer in Arizona. No, it's good for marijuana no. addict. Josh no, is Josh, a pot right. addict. Josh it's is a, a great name for marijuana addict. It's an name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Steve, Steve-O, Kurt is a strong meth name. See, Steve's not good, but Steve-O is great. Steve-O is great, yeah. So is Josh a good name for a coke addict? Because I've been trying that lately, too. Whoa. Yeah, it's all, stimulants are all basically the same. and so uh, All the same? Anti. Well, all right. it's all the same in terms of the syndrome that you represent. And, Josh, I, I treat Josh-like cases every single day. Now, and, with, uh, it, it always follows the same pattern. It's really interesting. How I mean, much? Been, uh, how much is a Josh? Hold on a second. How much is a gram of coke these days? Because I'm looking to get back. Uh, how much is a gram of coke? Yeah. Um, depends on how good you want it. I mean, you could pay sixty. You could pay 150 for it. Just depends on hmm, how yeah. good it is. Yeah. Eight ball. What's that run you these days? Uh, meth or coke? Coke. I mean, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> At that point. How, how much? How much for an eight ball? Hundred. Hundred bucks for an. How come Isn't it about more than a gram? It's like three grams and change. How change. come a gram is more than a, three grams? Huh? Oh, Josh is high. Josh, let me ask you something. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, <clears throat> we know you're not Asian, by the way, not only because you're uh, strung out on speed, but because your math skills. You you say that and it, uh, you, and yeah, the you say that a uh, a gram of coke is about a uh, hundred bucks if or it's 50 good. Fifty bucks, he said. Well, it could be anywhere from sixty to to one fifty. Uh, to 150. And by the way, the over a hundred percent range, not interested in that. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, how much is a flight to New York? Ah, uh, it could be five hundred. It could be twenty five hundred. <laughs> that that's that now now I'm where I was before I started talking. <laughs> Maybe worse. Uh, so if if a gram is about a hundred bucks, and how can an eight ball be about a hundred bucks? Quality. Oh, you yeah. stumped Josh. You stumped him. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, I think he's, he because might be on the quality goes down when the totally more you buy. Right maybe now. that's I'm totally it. Totally with it right now. Oh yeah, we got that. We okay, got that. buddy. That's all right. All right. So anyway, you got to get some help, right? Think so. I yeah, think so. Yeah. 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 We know so. Yeah. How about it, buddy? Let me ask uh, you this. I could try. I guess. I mean, I've been trying to quit. Not very successful. You're not, you're not going to quit on your own. I, I guarantee it. Well, yeah, yeah, but hey, Josh, it, it, what, what's in your life right now? Like, do you have, uh, do you have a, a like a good job that excites you so that you know you'd like fly up in the morning, you know, and like oh, maybe yeah, get to bed at a decent job. hour because you're excited about the day ahead of you? Because if you don't have that, it's kind of tough to stop doing what you're doing at night. Um, I got a good job. I mean, I've never been late for work. I never miss a day of work. I go to school full time. He, he does excuse. speed. He does speed during the day. Yeah. Uh, but isn't isn't meth a lot harder to come off than uh, haven't they? I, I think I read somewhere, or maybe I just made right. up that it's a lot harder to come off meth than it is to come off, you know, regu- uh, opiates or alcohol, which w- could generally be, uh, uh, um, you know, serviced with a twelve step program. That they're having a lot harder time getting people off. You know, it's harder for a couple of reasons. I can't say that it's certainly not harder than opiates or heroin. Okay, but. But it is difficult for a couple of reasons. Guys like Josh, you hear that denial. He's like, I can handle a lot of stuff. Yeah. And because it's not often not a daily drug, they, they really can't equate it with being addicted. They don't feel like they don't think they're addicted. And then when they try stopping, it's almost like the self ceases to exist. They get the sense that they, they'll just cease to exist without this drug. They feel so empty. And it's a very horrifying feeling. It's hard to get them through that. And they often have to spend a, you know, several weeks in a highly structured environment, like a sober living. You Josh, just call N.A. Call N.A., go to some 12-step meetings, meet some people who have been through what you've been through, and take some direction from them. All right. And, and there's you're nothing. You're not, not going to do it. It's not about stopping. It's about getting into a program right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. And good times. You good know. times, yeah. Shelly? Yeah. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Oh, oh boy. I heard I think we've got a bad line. What's up, Shelly? <laughs> Oh, she's obviously with singular. She's a uh, she's a go? virgin. Wants to know if there's any way to uh, stretch her j- vagina out before sex. Hmm. I can take that one in the back. Shelly, <laughs> go on. Are right, she gone? Yeah. All right, it's too bad. Maybe her hymen ruptured while she was on the phone. And she had to be airlifted somewhere. I think that's what happened. Can it can it blow? I hear they'll blow about twenty two, twenty three if they're still there. Oh yeah. They'll just blow. Oh, especially in this heat, too. It's <laughs> if it's hot, and I hear if the girl gets really angry. Yeah, if she's anywhere near Lake Arrowhead, that's probably what happened. 
Well, that's well, the altitude uh, issue. That happens later. Amber gets <laughs> caught up oh, in there. Oh. <laughs> Lights the tampon fuse. It's like an M80. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that, you haven't, you haven't seen anything. It is crazy. True. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be a great gag? Fuse well, tampons. Sounds like a Smigel cartoon. <laughs> It's a you, nice Smigel cartoon. Go, go through yeah. your, but go through your novelty tampons again, because th- that really is a, a thing with which time has come. Oh, it's, really? My novelty? Yeah. yeah. You, have was, list, you have a list of them? No, yeah. I was just thinking it'd, it'd be, guys are pretty well freaked out by tampons, but what if we shaped them like rats, you know, and just had the, the tail, tail hanging out? out or, sure. As a matter of fact, we don't have to shape the tampon just the like tail. anything. Just the string. Yeah, the string could be you made got the rat's various. tail. <laughs> <laughs> you got the lamp pull. Just that shape. You say that would be more appealing to a guy? You know what? It's At not even to a guy, guy little really. Little she, little she's the only one who's getting the giggle out of it. because they get a little laugh out of it. I mean, right. you guys knowing that they got it, they go to... It's empowering if you go to a meeting we gotta write these out. We gotta write these. Graduation down. tassel. Yes, that, that'd be nice, right? <laughs> for, and, for the special occasion, dingle balls or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah some rosary beads. Balls. Oh, rosaries. Rosary. Yeah. yeah, a natural. That'd be great. A natural. Yeah, you got your pearls. Sure. You got your Wilma Flintstone necklace kind of thing uh, like hanging a fo- out there. Phone cord. Phone cord. Yeah, phone yeah. cord would be good. Yeah. You got your general sort of just red rip cord kind of thing that comes on parachutes yes. or those zodiac rafts, yeah. you know, yeah. or anything Perfect. that inflates. Yeah, a little yeah. emergency. Let room. me ask you guys. You guys are doing a, a TV show. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to the inflatable raft humor? We haven't talked about that in a while. In the where, car. Yeah, they'd rip the cord on the thing. It would start uh, I love it. inflating I love in it. the phone booth that the characters are in. No, you can still find that over at ABC. Oh, yeah. You're still you doing just, that, yeah. huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All Laugh right. Out Loud Tuesdays. We need to see I gorillas. Think. Little gorillas on no, TV but again. I always wanted... There is one good show on Tuesday uh, on ABC. Uh, I'm with her. I'm a fan of that one. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't seen I think, it. I think he picks up a producer check on that. So. No. Oh, there's something. What, no, about, there what about throwing up into the glass? Though? I always like that inside a car, so when the camera's outside, <laughs> all you just see is just right. throw up, and then you... I think I think I figured out the connection. Paul Anka wrote the theme to I'm with her. <laughs> yes? No. All right, Jason Bateman is here tonight. Uh, Will Arnett is uh, here tonight. Both from... What the hell's the name of the show? Ah, Arrested Development. Sunday mm-hmm. nights, 9.30. Fox premiering uh, this Sunday night. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Jason Bateman. Will Arnett here tonight, both from Arrested Development, premiering on Fox this Sunday at uh, 9 30. And uh, that's such a warm group you have there that applauds for us. It's yeah. nice that they're here so late. They're fans. Oh. Thanks, guys. Will is uh, married to uh, Amy Poehler, who uh, Drew doesn't know because uh, Drew doesn't know anything, but uh, I know as a fan of uh, SNL, is on mm. uh, Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. And uh, marvelously talented, I should say, even if I didn't pronounce it right. Must be nice. Marvelous. Yeah. yeah. Marvelous, I can say, but marvelously, it uh, adds a, a degree of uh, difficulty to it. Tom Brokaw can't say that either. Is that... Uh, <laughs> do you, was, have you guys... Uh, did you meet her when she was on uh, Saturday Night Live? You must have met her before that. No, that was before, yeah. Yeah, because you couldn't land that kind of tale uh, <laughs> after. I mean, after. You'd be surprised. Really? Yeah. No, I know. You're you're nice looking. Huh? No, I'm, yeah. Easy. Hey, don't get jealous. Because no, I mean, he'll get up out Bateman, of the chair. Bateman gets jealous about that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's very protective. You see, he's sitting next to me, Adam. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a catch. She's really. She's great. Yeah, she's a really, really talented uh, uh, individual person. She's really good on that show. Yeah. 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 Genuinely funny. Mike? Yeah, hey, what's going on, guys? You're 19, what's up? Um, question. Last week I was getting, um, I guess you could say oral sex from my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And um, my right testicle, as she was doing that, uh, went inside me. Mm-hmm. And you never had that before? That's the gay one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, so I don't know. It must be the... Uh, my the, left the, is bi, and it's, really? yeah, it's not happy about bi. oral. Yeah. I mean, unless from a guy. Yeah. It, it, it didn't necessarily it's kind of hurt. It just felt 
weird. And I told yeah, Mike, that's hang normal. <laughs> Mike, it's yeah, normal. It happens to most so guys. These guys are laughing, Drew. That's good. That's yeah, what you I would do <laughs> if, I had a, if I had a soul. That's right. Uh, <laughs> especially when guys at, at the time of ejaculation, that's when it sort of typically occurs. Yeah, I think and, it was uh, not long before that. I mean, right. Was, you know, yeah, that's it, the, the cremasteric that. muscles kind of pull it up. What can you do? You wear uh, Nothing. Like a truss no, you or gotta, anything? You push it back down again because it can be kind of uncomfortable. But yeah, it, it can it, get it, lodged in there, right? No, no. No? no. Really? Tr- it, I've never heard of that. Uh-uh. You haven't? But uh-uh. you have heard of it going up in there when you're... Or never coming down. Never coming down, yeah, which is a non-descended <laughs> testicle. Basically, your testicle is running back to I where it that. started. Right. It Did starts, you have that? Uh, I had that when I was a kid. When I was like four, I had that. Didn't come down. Did they take it out or they pull it down? No, I don't know what they did. They're both there now. Yes, yeah, so they pull it down. All right. So that's oh, that's that's a bad thing? Yeah. No, don't worry about it. No, I is mean, it, like it didn't hurt or anything like that, so it won't hurt it or damage it. Or no, no. How do they? When they get it down, I imagine it's like trying to get a drawstring back into some sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that sort of weird, frustrating feeling of sort of I think trying. It's more to like get... trying to like push a golf ball through a sock. <laughs> but it, yeah, but I could do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know why that is. It seems like he's to spend a fair amount of time trying to get strings back into sweatpants, and somehow have outgrown it, or does it, they've worked it out. I what happens? Know, I if you could have someone responsible for that, you would have you know, saved a lot of frustration over the years. Yeah. What you're saying. I, I, spent, yeah. I spent a lot of time now as you a have kid a person doing, that. doing things with shoelaces and trying to thread things. <laughs> I rarely thread anymore. But yeah. the, the, somehow... Velcro like, took care of some of that. Is that what it yeah, was? Yeah. yeah, they're much better at designing that stuff. There are a lot more knots now on things, I yeah. think. Yeah, we're more not friendly yeah. society than yeah. we were. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was that whole "Why Not" campaign that ran in the mid '80s that I think kind of turned everyone on to it. <laughs> Eric, they, they approached you to do some uh, PSAs for that, didn't they? I, I, what are you talking about? I did a couple. Of I, I'm sorry, I didn't see them all. <laughs> Erica. Yes, I'm. You're I'm 17. Sorry. Yeah. What's up? Um. Okay, my boyfriend's come. Tastes horribly, horribly bad. Like, so it tastes bad. It tastes horribly bad. <laughs> horribly bad. And horribly bad. What's it taste like? Urine. No. That would be good. That would be urine. That would be horribly, horribly bad. Well, see, I before I was going out with my boyfriend, I used to swallow all the time. You know. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not like that. Shut up. But no, I used to swallow, and now I just can't do it. Like, but I mean, you you've you've sampled, you've done yes, I've sampled. Sampling. I've, I've sampled normal tasting cum, but this is just right. Like, is it taste or consistency or volume? It's like or? jello. It's not jelloey. You know, it's not that like hard, but it has. Well, it's True. Like you ever you ever do any, the You ever get up to jizz country and do some jizz tasting? <laughs> It's great. Uh, you get a it's basket. Just east of Napa. Yeah, you get a, you know you get you get a bicycle. <laughs> it's great. Get tours. A bicycle built for goo. <laughs> for goo. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, you you're you're feeling right by your eighth or ninth uh, ginsel. Uh, what would you call? It? What would a vineyard be? It's a it's a it's a ginyard. Jizz jizzyard. <laughs> jizzyard. Mm. Uh, Erica. Yeah. So this guy's worse, way worse than all the other guys. Yeah, and it, it makes me it makes me gag. Like, yeah, but you hear what I she have, said? She doesn't like the chunks. Oh, you don't you don't like the consistency? Right. Okay. The cons- the consistency is really really gross, and I have to like mm-hmm. run to the bathroom to like spit it out and like brush my teeth. True. Ooh. You know, in uh, you oh. know, in like um, bathroom sinks, they have those aerators. You you screw on the little screen. You screw onto the bottom oh, of yeah, the yeah. spigot yeah, so yeah. the water doesn't all just sort of comes out a little foamy. Yeah. yeah. Anything like that for the penis? No. It's it's no. No, it's well, like, no, but okay. I think this, uh, we need to invent something for, something for the mouth. You know, it's like, like um, some sort of like you know. No, I'm, like, I'm saying, hold on a second. We may be on to something no, here. But the, the penis something that the could culprit. that go onto the penis. Yeah, but she doesn't. You want it, Don't want it going in the mouth. It's, yeah, but you want it coming out of the penis. If you keep things in the penis, you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, you're saying like a it has, sieve. It has come, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying like just a, like a, a, a jizz colander. colander. But yeah, colander. That's basically yeah. what I'm right. saying. Yeah, like what's on top of this microphone right now, maybe. Right, but right, it, almost to, exactly. As a matter, I'll make right. the rest yeah. of the so night perfect. comfortable for us. Yeah, yeah. be perfect. Right, and yeah. I say it goes on top of the penis, right. not the mouth. Right. Yeah, but it can't. It can't be. It has to be a little bit loose on the, on the penis. It clamps on like a bite guard for a dog. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, there's something here. I mean, we're gonna have to. We're gonna put a few bucks in R and D. We'll figure it out. Erica. Yeah. Do you, does he know he tastes worse than all the other? Yeah, tastes? and he actually, he's 
um, tried to call before and asked him and ask like what the matter is because like how, it, how often does he ejaculate? Well, we have sex every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And Maybe. and you do this? You do this for him every day? Um. Well, sometimes we have sex. Sometimes I give him head, depending on you know what Son I feel head. like. How old is this guy? He's eighteen. God. Oh He's God. 18. Son of a oh, bitch. God. <laughs> Maybe it's a lot of curry or something. Yeah. And uh, does it, is it every time this uh, disgusting way? Every, yes, every time I've disgusting given it head. Time. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, it's the consistency of it is like, ask, like when you blow your nose and you have a really, really bad cold, and yeah. it's like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's really gross. All right, but he, here's the thing. It, it never comes out like butterscotch. I mean, it never tastes great. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It can only get so good. It, good man, can it get bad? But it can really go south. All right, what can we do? Uh, does this guy eat a lot of Lunchables? No. <laughs> All right. I no. don't want to get into that story. <laughs> the, the, the point, there, there, there are things that, 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 that change the taste of it, yes, yeah. no? I mean, probably I watch not. Sex in the City. Yeah, we do not. We do hear We do hear that, like, uh, pineapple juice. We hear it, but uh, it's never been confirmed. And, and it's really, it, her problem is not really is not the taste. It is the consistency. Really? And there's well, nothing we can do about that. <clears throat> it's the Erica. tapioca. Why, yeah. why, you don't have to ingest it. Why don't you just spit it out like you've been doing? She does. She well, needs to run to the bathroom, nearly vomits, brushes it's, her teeth. It's, you know, it's... <laughs> It's not that he has a problem with you spitting it out. It's just that I'd rather swallow it if I could. So I was wondering if there is something uh -huh. that, you know. Why Why would it? you rather swallow it if you could? It's easier. Uh, but let's just say this. Let's say you were in front of the refrigerator. You took a swig of milk. It had turned. It had gone bad. Mm. Would it be easier to swallow it no. or easier just to run over the sink and spit it out? 17. She's going to get over it. <laughs> yeah. I I'm a little too enthusiastic here. About right? swallowing it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, you know, it's, the, it's the protein that I think that she's looking for, maybe. And I think you're on to something, something more to that. Yeah. Worries me. <laughs> yeah, she's on the Atkins. Hey, <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well, look. Hey, look, here, here's the thing. We can't change the consistency. Drew, what if we just started eating flour in bulk? I mean, <laughs> just lots of flour. Nothing? Not no. bulk flour, confectioner sugar, or something. No. Just like you're saying, like try to build a coffee cake in his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. All right, you you just have to spit it in the, into the yeah. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, like a good girl, by the way. That's that's what the girls that go to finishing school do. Anyway. Well, maybe just keep something nearby, a <laughs> towel or something. A little spit cup. You don't even have finishing school. Yeah, like do. yeah, like uh, yeah, like guys who dip. Guys who chew tobacco, they keep that cup. Yeah, just <laughs> Like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, just keep a little uh, spittoon next to the bed. Oh, this, this really, quite honestly, this is what uh, I haven't given this speech in a while. Potted plants in your room, like a fern. Mm. This is a catch-all. This is a storm drain. <laughs> this is a urinal. But this is this is a roof scupper. This is everything. You know what I mean? You can vomit into this thing. You can urinate in a pinch. You can uh, spit some bad spunk into it. Yeah, it's, you this. blow a snot rocket. I mean, plants. Plants are and, like and nature's dis garbage yeah, disposal. Yeah, think with this plant on them every day for America. A little, that's little true. Bit yeah, All right, it's for emergencies. All right, but seriously, a, a nice p potted uh -huh. fern. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You can hide stuff in there, like uh, if there's a roach or something, and your stepmom's coming up the stairs. You know, you just shove it in there. So it's it's a good thing, Drew. People don't have enough potted plants in their house anymore. Hmm. You know, yeah, that was a big thing in the seventies, wasn't it? There was people like. My mom was into that uh, talking to the plants. Yeah, yeah. and then didn't, hanging them from macrame. Yeah, mm. yeah. Didn't talk to the kids that much, ironically, <laughs> but uh, love to carry on with the plants. Maybe yeah. the plants didn't want to be fed or hugged. <coughs> All right, let's keep moving forward, Drew. Yeah, it's a sore point. It is. <laughs> Melissa? Yeah? You're 17? Yep. What's up? Um, well, about a week ago, I started birth control, and Great. I was curious as to if it mattered so much that I didn't take it at the exact same time every night. How and like, far off? Huh? How far off were you? Um, sometimes about an hour. Um, That's fine. A couple That's times fine. it's been a couple hours. That's fine. It's fine? Yeah. So I, don't, I can wait like a week and just go at it without a condom? Well, it's an interesting question. Uh, some people would say, for most people I think would say for safety, you want to wait till you completed your first cycle. I, I couldn't hear you what? Why you should hearing me. I don't know. No, uh, the most most people would advise you to wait till you completed an entire cycle. Oh, uh huh. Of the pill. What, which one are you on? 
Um, ortho tricyclin. Yeah, the tricyclic ones are probably safe and probably fine, but still, okay. I know a lot of doctors still advise you to take. Uh, <laughs> well, so. what did what did your doctor say? Well, one of them said that it was it was sure or he he was sure that I should take it at the same time every night, and then the other doctor I went to yesterday or the day before or something said that. Um, it was okay as long as it was in a f two to four hour period. Yeah, I agree with that, doctor. Okay. I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to know what he said about when you could start having sex. Oh, the, about a week into it, about Nine. a week into the pill. Nope. Nine. Nine. These guys know as much as Drew, if not more. So <laughs> you don't have to call the show. <laughs> okay. Well. All right, but good times. Yeah, good times. All right. Hey, uh, you're calling from Oregon. I am. Weather. What's the, what's the weather like over there? Um, I think actually, I think we missed the season. It's it's actually been really hot here lately. Really? And, yeah. I mean, shockingly enough, we've had zero rain, and um, well, today it drizzled, but what does but, she mean by hot? Yeah, hot? she means it's the seventies, seventies, seventies. You know how that makes us feel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's cooling off here or we're having like what what we call nuclear winter. It is nuclear winter. Is that what Make it is? Make no mistake about it. The, the sun was blocked out by s fire smoke today. Yeah. Yeah. I felt bad for the victims, but I did feel happy that we dropped a few degrees. But it was it was macabre. Mm. Oh, Weird. Yeah. You know, my wife uh, told me tonight. Uh, she said we should we should say something about the victims' funds, and that uh, people could call in or not call in, but people could go on the. Uh, website and uh, donate money. Well, I can tell you that, that my wife got me uh, into my closet last night and I pulled out uh, two large trash bags of clothes that I haven't worn for a year and a half. Oh, to and, donate? Yeah, she took them down to the Red Cross. and. I think it's interesting yeah. that your wife put you back in the closet. Well, no, I knew that sounded bad. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so uh, I thinned out the closet and uh, and, and helped out uh, some people at the same time. I could just see it, like a guy's going, dude, you dress like that guy from Hogan's band. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Hey, you're a Teen Wolf, too. <laughs> Do you want to give the site out? Because I've got it. Your wife emailed me on my pager. Oh, the uh, well, I think it's the K-Rock uh, site. It's, K it's www.kroq.com. Then what I've got is forward slash K-Rock now. Yeah. Forward slash K-Rock now dot HTML. All right, but just go to the K Rock www.krock.com, dot mm -hmm. K R O Q, and uh, right at the front of the page, it'll tell you uh, where to donate. We donated, uh, I, uh, we donated some money. I don't know how much. My they wife. Need, they need clothes. Yeah. You know, it's going to get cold pretty soon, and everything's gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. They say it may get into the eighties. Yeah. By uh, December. Shorts, shorts, yeah. and wife beaters. That's right. All right. Should we take a uh, take a quick break? Why not? I like the guys who uh, want to stay behind, and even though there's no uh, electricity or water pressure, they just want to hang with their house, and they just uh, urinate on the gazebo in order to keep it alive. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I like those grizzled guys. I heard about an invention today, by the way, where you, uh, Drew, you'd like this. You plug it in your pool. You just drop the, uh, drop the uh, you know, elephant's trunk down into the pool, fire up a Briggs & Stratton, and you got like uh, 30,000 gallons, huh. and it's putting out like a... I don't know, it's like 130 gallons a minute or something. Your garden hose puts out like 30 gallons. Huh? Not yeah. a bad thing to Sign have, right? Sign me up. Yeah, Drew? Yeah. Yeah. Get you one you of those. Tons of hose, though. You need to... You know, you need to well, all right, you got to get, get some hose. Going, yeah. But the point is, is you have your entire swimming right, pool right at your disposal. When the water pressure's gone and the embers are falling on the roof of your house, you got your swimming pool. Let's bring it on. Yeah. You know, you know, your last last moments in life would be trying to get the mower engine started, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> fire closing. <laughs> <laughs> Wife standing there, choke it, choke it. <laughs> you should have put the stabilizer in the tank. <laughs> the, draw, the drawstrings are come out of your uh, your that, sweatpants, and you can't get the string back your, through. That'd be your last memory. Like, like you ever see those? Um, Hammers advertised. This is uh, you see it in the in-flight magazine. It's the life hammer. It's the hammer that goes in yeah. your car, so that when it you pull like the Chappaquiddick thing, when, they, when you go off the bridge and capsize <laughs> into the into the and bog, kill somebody. <laughs> well, you, you, theoretically, almost kill yourself. But when you're in the car and the doors have locked and the windows roll up, you get the life hammer out of your car and bust out the window and swim to safety. This is an actual invention that I saw being sold. I have sold. not seen that. It, you'll Sky see Mall. It, Sky Mall. You'll see it next to the ladder, the rope ladder for the two-story buildings and the fire and the whole thing. But I thought, see, first, here's why this invention is no good. First off, 
regular hammer. Yeah. <laughs> can't can't bust the car window with a regular hammer? No. You know, I, I think I could do it with my forehead if I was taking <laughs> taking in enough water. Yeah. Number one. Number two, uh it's it's uh, four in the morning. You've won off the bridge because you're loaded. <laughs> you're now upside down in your vehicle and you're under thirty feet of water. Right. Uh you, where's that goddamn hammer? It's drive with it in your hand all the time. It's in the, it's in the trunk. It's you in the it. trunk. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wherever it is, Rip you ain't open. getting to it. You're not, but that's where they'll find you. They'll find you trying to rip open the back seat, <laughs> trying to chew through the back seat to get into the trunk to get the hammer of life. Well, let me ask you, at what point of the, of the flight is it okay to read the Sky Mall? Like, uh, at what point are you a loser? Before takeoff. Yeah? Yeah, yeah the, the movie. That's, that's the time you can glance at everything that's in the front, and then you're it, supposed to put it away. And then you just put it away? Like middle of the flight, you when pull it out, and that's loser. That is loser middle. <laughs> to me, it's, uh, it's or, you didn't bring anything to read. What about if you're looking at you're looking at like uh, where Americans' gates are at like Heathrow, and you never go overseas, and you're like, oh, good to know that there's an admirals club next to 49. It, it's like Fifth Bloody Mary, <laughs> and uh, they're uh, they're showing uh, my dog spot. For there you the, go. Uh, and you saw it on the on the way. And in. good boy. And good boy. Yeah. All right, we'll take a uh, quick break, and we'll be right back. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Will Arnett is here. Jason Bateman is here. Arrested Development. Name of the show, Sunday night, 930 on Fox, everybody. Big premiere this Sunday. And we got to make it big. Yeah. we got to come out big. Yeah. Show up. You will not be pissed. No. And, and listen, you guys are funny. You're yeah. funny, you Adam. Yeah. Thank you. But you don't, need, you don't need the work. You're not doing this for, for the money. I don't take a salary. I I, well, I get I get Will the balance does. of what Will he does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I need but listen, to. Your, your father-in-law is not Paul Anka. No, he's not. Right. My father-in-law is uh, Bill Poehler in Burlington, Mass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. Uh, super uh, Amy Poehler, by the way, uh, wife of uh, Will, who's uh, very funny on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she yes. Bring, she brings home some money, right? She does. You could yeah. be a stay-at-home dad. <clears throat> I guess I could. Um, to my dogs. Is it? Is it? Oh, is it? Oh, you don't have any kids. Well, no, we could, we could we've only that. been married since August. Is it? Uh, you have an ego about that? Having a funny wife who makes a lot of money? No. Nah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> it's crazy. That all the yeah. time. Yeah. She's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, hilarious and super talented. Yeah. It's great. You know, Lauren Michaels ain't handing out the gold chips over there. No. By the by, nobody and, does that uh, show to. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, handsome Will Arnett's got an equally handsome voice that brings in quite a bit of money every year, isn't mm -hmm. that right, Willie? Really? Mm -hmm. Mr. I GMC? Do, I do the VO. I do yeah. the VO. Oh, you do the GMC? I do, I do yeah. GMC trucks. Yeah, you do have a good voice. He's got that voice quality down. Yeah. Do, uh, do, do some of that GMC. <clears throat> Here we go. God, what is the new G um, well, do, like do, do, do the one. Now, isn't the one where, where is it a commercial where they're saying the guy's an engineer and he yeah. engineers his car, you know, he's a GMC <laughs> yeah, engineer uh, in his truck? Um, uh, um, prof uh, it's a uh, professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. <laughs> there it is, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, hey, that's what Amy Poehler's loving, right but there. But I, I used to do, I used to do like promos for, um, for the networks, uh, for like CBS before, and that was, you know, paying the rent stuff. But it was, it, and well, I might add, um, if they're still hiring, and it, and it was like, you know, uh, unattached by an angel, you can't believe. And I'd always think like. How can you not believe it? <laughs> There's no way that it's unbelievable. There's nothing that you can do on Touch by an Angel that I won't believe. Here's, here's what I want you to do for me, because I've been thinking about this yeah. for a while. I always want to hear him do this one. This week on Hack, in order to catch an arsonist, Hack's going to have to become a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> like I just to be, make people think for a minute, and then each week, it's a new thing. In order, in order to bust up a laundry money, uh, money laundering scheme, scheme Hack's going to have to become a rapist. It's just, he always is a rapist, no matter what. It, it, it doesn't matter what he's trying to bust, he has to become. So give me one of those. Give me one of those. In order to... To reach these kids, Hack will have to become a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> See, now it's funny. Yeah. Right. All right, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write this. I'm gonna write a few hack scenarios out. That's good. That's good. Be good. Yeah. Now, what would be a good thing for Hack to? Uh, bust what is out? Hack? Touched by an uncle. Yeah. See, <laughs> you should do a CD. Oh, that's a love line <laughs> subject uh, matter. Kara, you're right. Yeah. 
You're 20? Yep. What's up? What's up? Um, I I use the, no, the Nuva Ring, but yeah. um, also we use um, the foam contraceptive. And sometimes we like to, you know, use whipped cream and stuff. And Do I was they advise you to use? Are they advising you to use the uh, a contraceptive foam with the ring? Um, well, I have like a I have a weird um, menstruation going yeah, on, the, so but, like I but don't. But the the foam's not going to do much for you. Well, she just said to use a second one, so. Well, they no no. I think maybe she means like a barrier, like a condom, that sort of thing. No, she was because we're not sure like why I'm not menstruating regularly. So okay. she said just for a few months, just make sure I use a backup, like a second backup. All right. Uh, you better clarify what she means by backup when you talk to her. But go ahead. Well, just for pregnancy, we aren't worried no. about disease or anything. No, I know, but they usually mean a barrier when they mean a say a backup, like a condom. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Anyways, my question was that. If I'm using the foam and then, like, we're using whipped cream or something, would that by, like, any chance make the foam inactive? The foam is already no good, is yeah. my point. And you could destroy the Sunday. <laughs> the Absolutely Sunday. destroy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so the foam is already really not doing much. So I, Even I though it's, think, like, up in there and everything? Yeah, it's not doing much. And I don't think the whipped cream is going to significantly affect it one way or another. Really? Yep. Hmm. Right. Foam is not very effective. It's no. right. I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's not very effective. Uh, yeah. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to work this hack thing out. <laughs> right, this is going to be this is really great. This <laughs> thief, uh, T H I or T H E? I F. Oh yeah, I got uh, it. Before, before E, except after C. Yeah, I was thinking about that. All right, we we got some yeah. good hack. I got some good hack reads when we come back. All right, All right we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's Loveline Drew coming to the studio. Thank you. Jason Bateman is in the studio tonight. Will Arnett is in the studio tonight. Arrested Development, <clears throat> name of their show, Sunday night, 9.30 on Fox, starting, premiering this Sunday. You do not want to miss this. All right, I was uh, talking to uh, Will during the break. I worked out a little. Will does, uh, he's a big voiceover guy. He's got a very powerful voice and uh, makes a lot of money from that voice. I'm looking to make him uh, pick him up a little sidewalk uh, <laughs> doing the uh, doing the st doing the hack stuff I love it the uh, promotions for hack so I've, uh, I wrote one out for him let's uh, let's see how now you promised that this is going to get to the people <clears throat> at hack <clears throat> oh yeah okay definitely we can get it to them yes Joe? <clears throat> of course they're probably listening of course. but they're, if not, they're, we'll they're, they're taping it now we'll get them I'm tape. only going to do this if yeah, yeah. okay All right. this week on hack to catch an international jewel thief Hack is going to have to become a rapist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's powerful. <laughs> That's strong. And see, each week it's something else. <laughs> but it no. equally is impressive each week. Just incredible. <laughs> yeah, it always ends with rapist. I'd, but yeah, I'd like it if you became like the head writer on Hack, and then they kept throwing their hands up, and they're like, "Why every week does Hack become a rapist?" It's yeah, it's yeah. comedy. Listen, anyone who read Hack the Book and saw Hack the Play knows. <laughs> They're expecting this. We're staying true to the material. <laughs> They're expecting it. Yeah. That's right. You try to bust an international jewel thief as an international jewel thief, you you're going to have, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a tough time spinning this off as a kid's sun, uh, Saturday morning cartoon, though. No, I think. I think this I week on kids. Hack, he's going to have to become a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is good times. Where are we, Drew? Up Five. here? Yeah. Five? Let's talk to uh, Alex, who's 15. Hey. Alex, what's happening? Okay. Well, my question was, like, if you were to go to a junior college that is in Canada, would that make it, like, a junior junior college? Hmm. Because Canada's a junior country. <laughs> yeah. I beg your pardon. But the, the educational system <laughs> could be superior up there. Right. Well, it, it would have to be. They may not screw around with things like junior colleges. Well, do they have junior college in Canada? Yeah, in yeah, Quebec my they have. Uh, one. <laughs> oh, really? In Quebec they have uh, Marianopolis, which is between high school and and college. Really? Yeah, the wow. French they do things. It's all Napoleon Code and I stuff. I could get into that. Huh. <laughs> but it, is, it, is it a staging for college? <clears throat> well, you know what they actually have the in baccalaureates and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like a staging area for yeah. college, and they they do have uh, grade thirteen in Ontario. Yeah. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Which is also like the equivalent of, of first year of college. I think I was in that in the uh, 12th grade. <laughs> I like when they say grade in front of instead of that <laughs> after. I like okay, that. and Adam, I also yeah. wanted, to, I wanted to appeal to the, to the junior college court because I'm 15 and I hated high school. Mm-hmm. So I went and I got myself accepted to a junior college because I couldn't afford to go to the university, obviously, mm-hmm. at my age because I can't work. Here's, uh, by the way, the protocol for being accepted to a junior college is you showing up and going, uh, uh, I'm here. That's, that's how you get in. <laughs> you get in, you're accepted to a junior college by actually arriving at a it junior college. It was actually college. really hard because they're like, well, you're 15. We don't like you. I'm like, <laughs> Right. How'd you, do, how'd you do there? How am I doing? Yeah. Oh, well, I have a 3.8 right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. But out of can, it's out of ten in Canada. Out of ten? Like an oh, eight oh. out of ten, oh, you're maybe? Not, you're not, you're nine not going to school ten. in Canada, right? You're going out in the United oh, no. States? I'm in Washington. Oh, okay. State of Washington? Yeah. Oh, really? And you just, what, you didn't like high school? Well, high school is really blue. I don't know. People there suck. Really? Yeah, How are they at like. junior college? Huh? How are the people at junior college? They don't talk. They yeah. sit in the classroom and they They're learn. Or it's really, really nice. Wow. It's nice. Aren't your parents kind of freaked out? I mean... <laughs> My parents are like, yeah, our daughter ran away to college, but I still well, live home, so... Well, I mean, okay. don't you just start a date who's ever at your school when you're 15? No. Something, something happened at school? Yeah, what oh, happened? Well, there was this girl, and she started spreading crap around me, crap about me around the school. Like what? What? Like telling people I was a lesbian and stuff, and... Uh, are you? No. Oh my yeah. God, no! <laughs> really? And that's all. That's and all that, it took. That chased you out of high school. Well, that and it's like you can't sit and learn in a class without like. You're a lesbian. No. <laughs> without what? Without what? Without like. <laughs> without like the teacher having to stop and discipline some idiot for like you know, <laughs> doing stuff that Adam probably did. Oh, how <laughs> dare you! By the way, I called every guy a new fag, and it never, it never drove them out of the school. Yeah, but she to... was like putting posters up around the school about me. And why? What did you do to her? Anything? Nothing. I don't know. She it's like down her. on her once. And, and would the school kind of come to your aid in this? Yeah, I mean, I went and I talked to like my counselor and the vice principal and everything, and they're like, "Yeah, well, we can't do anything unless we catch her in the act." Oh my well, what god! What about the posters? That, that's in the act. I know, and I like I brought them the posters. I'm like, look, look what she did, and they're did like. You... Yes, but it doesn't say her name anywhere on these posters. Maybe this girl's got a crush on you. Did you have to leave yeah. your friends behind? Were there relationships that were sort of... Uh, oh, no, it was Alex a completely different friends. separate... It was a separate group of friends. Yeah. Uh, were they, like, laminated uh, posters? Yeah. Or? Like, yeah they weren't life partners the way Adam's friends have been. <laughs> have, have proved themselves to be. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true. You call people life partners now instead of fag? Yeah. No, he, hey, Adam <laughs> has a, a couple I mean, of life no. partners. Yeah, I do. And That's you've always cool. called them fag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. I know. Right. Sometimes I bust out the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> so your life partners? Yeah. That's good. All right, uh, Alex. Yes. Yeah, have fun in uh, JC there. JC, oh, yeah. Uh. That's junior well, college. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I you're got it. You're going to go to university soon? Yeah, well, when I graduate, I will. Okay. So, but nice. stop being such a snob, by the way. Oh, I can't help it. I'm British. All right. You're British. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, a- Alex is a little snobby, and the know, reason that's people don't like her is because they, they shouldn't like her. She's very <laughs> gregarious and everything, but I'm sure she's snobby and a pain in the Wait, ass. Wait, so mm-hmm. are you still yeah. there? Yeah. Go to school in the uh, east where everybody's snobby about ooh, their education. What temperature is it there these days, like no, right now? It's Right now it's probably 72. Out. It's cool, cooling off. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, there. Good okay. times. All right. All right. She's, no, look, but, uh, people are snobby about that. People are, are, are sort of... Casually snobby about their education in the East. You know, oh, without not, question. Not, yeah, it's not a not a not not the way. How way do, more what, so how, what do you mean snobby about their education? They um, you know make note and they you know. They I get really snobby with Bateman about it. Yeah. If he says something, and I'll say, "Yeah, take it easy, West Coast." Yeah. Yeah. What? Did you go to school on the no. East Coast? Well? No. no. <laughs> I dropped out of college in Canada. You didn't go to Voiceover Academy. No, I did. Anything? I did do that. Yeah, of course. Victoria College. You have to. Where, where you college? <laughs> uh, Concordia University, of Montreal. Montreal. Megan. Yeah. You're 20? Yep. What's up? First of all, I want to say I love you, Adam and Drew, so much. Drew, Thanks. your book was amazing. It helped me out a lot. Thank you, Megan. And um, <clears throat> my question is, I feel like I can only have sex when I'm drunk. Mm-hmm. I've had like eight one-night stands, and that's 
like my whole like sexual history. Huh. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Have I have like a- I had really bad depression in high school. Uh, I have generalized anxiety disorder with uh-huh. social phobia, uh-huh. ADHD, and uh, avoidance personality disorder. Ooh, what's that one? I don't know. I guess you uh, avoid stuff. Yeah, it's unable to you know unable to to manage you know to yeah. stay, hang with things. Just, you know, yeah, I like run away from my problems. Yeah. And I mean, really, just but unable to be around them. Just yeah, just and I yeah. kind of have a little problem with drinking too. But yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing <coughs> that. Oh, is she drunk now? Yeah, right now. I don't run for my proms. I face them head up, and I can actually move toward them. But then I give a little like shake and bake move and slip around them, <laughs> right. And keep going, and then it's to the problem end zone. That's, well, that's, 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 that's good. That's manage your problem, not avoid them. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Megan, are you drinking now? No, I'm oh, just okay. like really nervous. What's your What's your drink? You're what's calling my from drink? Minnesota. You schnapps girl. Oh, Miller High Life Light. <laughs> Oh, really? Uh-huh. Hams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and are you living at home? No, nope, I'm uh, at college right now. Oh. All, All right. right. So do you have friends? Do you have relationships? you had a boyfriend? Uh, no, I've never really had a boyfriend before. Yeah. I guess I've never really even been, been friends with guys, I guess. If the, if, all right, let, let's just sort of look at it this way. If you could sort of manufacture, just sort of paint the picture of a kind of interaction you'd like to have with a guy... Other than what you've been doing, which is getting loaded and having sex, but what would that look like? What would your I would just like I don't know like my biggest fear is like I'll never get married or find. Forget the fear. That, like, just tell me. Forget me. the yeah yeah. Forget the fear. But what would what would the an ideal sort of interaction be like if you could? <coughs> I would it? just like I don't know being able to like talk to a guy and like being able to like act like myself right. that I can okay. with All right. my so friends. So you, you want a guy? This this is always the answer, gentlemen, and it's one that guys cannot get. We it's like nonsensical to us. Women will all, you generally say they want a guy to sit down and talk to them. Mm-hmm. And if they actually do, they do PET scans on women. You know, men, are, our brains light up in a certain way when we're looking at pictures of nude women. Their brains light up in a similar way when they're having conversation. Mm-hmm. And so their thing is, I just want a guy to sit down and talk to me. And so, Megan, why don't you kind of work on that, finding people that can kind of sit down and just spend time with you and listen to you and be with you. And that actually be a healthier alternative to you to what you're doing. Well, you know, find what? What? Like, I really only hang out with, like, my four roommates. Like, other than that, if I hang out with anybody else, I feel like I have to be drunk. To, like, I don't understand that. But if you can find a way, if you can't, then you got to go to therapy. Okay. But well, if you can, you got to find a way to find people that will just sit and listen to you, just to chat with okay. you. Yeah, well, what about your roommates? Don't they have friends? Yeah. All right, they come around, right? Yeah, they do. But You can't like, hang out with them? Yeah, well, then I'm usually high. Yeah, but, usually, huh? Yeah. Megan, how old's Megan? Megan, how old? 20. 20. How long have you been drinking? Um, well, like, I started drinking when I was 16, but it really didn't <clears throat> get bad until I started going to college. The alternative is to go to AA, get a sponsor, and start working a program. That I is your alternative. Tr- I did try that, but I don't know. Well, if, when you're avoiding, it's hard to get in and do Yeah, and I've need to. been in detox twice, but... Ooh, we didn't really? throw that in, so... Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. What's the matter? Were you traumatized growing up? No, like, I seriously, like, don't know what's wrong with me because nothing bad happened to me when I was younger or anything. Yeah. Maybe she needs to be on some medication. Could be. I am. Oh, you are? Yeah, what I'm on uh, Lithavid, um, Depakote, Wellbutrin, and Adderall and Trazodone. Well, I, I am, so you you have bipolar. Next time, bipolar just tell us also. what you're not taking. Yeah. I should save a little time. For yeah, I'm not things. an Adderall fan for people with alcoholism. You should okay. be aware that that does tend to confound things. Well, to be honest, the only ones and, I take are trazodone and Adderall. Yeah, and, and drop the ADHD diagnosis. That'll just confuse you. All alcoholics have ADHD. They do? Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, a lot of those drugs are like um, uh, mood lifters, essentially. No, they're mood stabilizers, so she's bipolar. So when you she's mix those with alcohol, it just you know, makes things worse. Yeah, It's not right. a good color. Blackout. She's not even taking her mood stabilizers, though, she said. so. But what about, I, I know this is, uh, I don't know, Pollyanna-ish or something, or old-fashioned, but if you have that constant mantra of, I can't get along with people, I freak out in social situations, I have to drink to be around new people, yep. aren't you just going to, is that going to become your life? Yeah, that, that, that's my point. You either either can mobile, mobilize, you know, a rally, yeah. or you can't. And if you can't, then you got to get some real help. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you got here, Drew? I'm sorry. Uh, you got to call five, me like five. What about this one? It says anal sex. Okay, you can take that. All right. See, there's certain words that jump out at me. <laughs> I thought you didn't read. Adam's great. No, I know when my I see my name, and then I see anal sex. The only two words I see. Well, I guess it's three. Kimberly. Hello. 
Once in a while, I see him in the same sentence, and I dive on that one. <laughs> Kimberly, what's up? You're uh, 18? Um, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm on with you guys. I totally love you guys, Adam. You're so funny, and yeah. I think uh, Dr. Dude is extremely sexy. I've been waiting for years to say that since I've been listening to you guys. Um, wow, Kimberly. My question is... Um, I had anal with my boyfriend, and he came inside me, and I was, like, all wet, because, like, I guess I had my own, uh, like, fluids going, and then his, and so I couldn't tell the difference in the end, and, like, I was wondering if there's any way that I could actually uh, get pregnant from anal sex. So the stew of vaginal what, yeah, what, anal What fluids semen. were you uh, cooking up yeah. in that... Uh, fart out the baby? That, no, no, what? she means she, she, her vaginal excretions were kind of yeah. mixing in. Oh, they were? Yeah. What position were you... Or did you have the fan on? Or what? Uh, no, I was on top of him. Oh, on top... In the, oh, really? Yeah. See, to me, that's... Uh, you're, you're, that's what I'm talking Yeah, you're racing with the devil when you do that on top <laughs> anal thing. You're, you're asking for trouble. It's... You, you really are. Why? Because I can get pregnant, or <laughs> no, no, not so much for you. Uh, more. This is more of. I'm very lap conscious. Uh, I I worry about my lap a lot. A lot of people, it's their face. Other people, it's, they have problems with their teeth. <laughs> for me, I worry about my lap. Yeah, uh, aren't like behind? Aren't, he shouldn't a guy be behind you when he's doing the anal. Well, we were trying different types of positions. Very bold. Uh, I'm very, not very progressive. I'm, progressive here. I'm gonna, relax. Yeah, man, you're, you're uptight, man. Relax. Okay. Dude, relax. All right. You're always accusing me of being uptight. You're you're up, dude, that's very European to do it. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <sighs> to me, it just would feel, it'd be like you, you got in an accident on your uh, in your ten speed and landed on a kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what that sensation would feel like to me. Like, uh, call me old-fashioned, but I just want to be bent over something and cornhauled. Oh, you, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, I'm. That's me, though. That's that's the way I came up. That's you know, my parents. We're sort of old school that way. Oh, my grandfather old, was a good old-fashioned anal. Yeah, my my grandfather was an ankle grabber. Oh. His uh, my father, you know, his father. Before Do you remember him. when your dad sat you down? And talk to you about anal for the first What's time. That thing? He sat me down, but he spoke to me from between his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Just to really drive home that point. So to speak. Uh, so she's got the seat post, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, she got the seat post, right. That's what it is. All right, and uh, and so so his <sighs> yes, you could get pregnant. It's possible, right? I mean, there's fluids mixing, and uh, well, unlikely, unlikely, and uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that child was meant to be. If that happens, right, Adam? Would you say? I, I would say, especially if gravity's. When gravity, did you find, please? What? I'm just saying it's a possibility. Of course, when all those fluids are mixing, however. Gravity's kind of working against it, isn't it? This is one of the genius of what Kimberly's devised here, is that the gravity is going to go her way. Mm -hmm. You see? Things are not going to go down and then back up. Yeah, but, so much. but here's, what I, here's my argument to that, which is sometimes, like in your car, you're leaking tranny fluid. We're talking about, we've gone from right. anal to transition fluid. <laughs> I'm saying, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's coming, the actual part it's dripping off your car is way back by the differential, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't followed the contour well, of not the drive shaft and the tranny Got it. and just come off there, And that's so. just a pure liquid sort of physics. Right. You got sperm swimming. Yeah, sperms. They're going. To, they're going to Mecca. They're I, they're on their way. Right. I don't know how they move in a swamp, though. You know, and I'm, I'm yeah, saying I mean, there might be yeah, enough. Yeah. Uh, you introduce fecal matter, and I think you you got what you call a Mexican standoff. Right <laughs> there, it's the fecal matter versus <laughs> the sperm. That's a battle. There, usually they just you know they just got to make it through a couple of pubes and could uh, be a hack episode. Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, but did he say that after he did the uh, the the uh, rectal stuff, he went into the vagina? No, no, no. She didn't say that. All right, so I'm so she's just sitting there on top of everything. She should be. She should. Yeah, be just saved. minding her own business. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, that's good times. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Where's she on line six? Yeah. All right. Kimberly. We're uh, Kimberly. Kimberly. Yeah. Is that the right name for this call? No, I'm gonna start calling yeah. you Kim. Yeah. Yeah, Kim. That's fine. Okay. okay. All right. Kim. Yeah, uh, Kimbo. We, yeah, we're, we've decided that you're probably not pregnant. Okay. And you should look at your transmission. However, yes. uh, given that you're not using contraceptives, is that correct? Yeah, I'm not. I didn't and, use any type. And God knows if he has an STD, you've sort of found the optimum way to transmit it. He's 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 mm -hmm. offering you whatever he's got. Right. 
yeah. should be using a condom. And if you're not, keep that morning after pill handy. Just in case you have a question like this and you want to be extra sure, take the morning after pill. How can I, uh, but, but, like, do I get it at, like, Planned Parenthood or whatever? You can get it at Planned Parenthood. You can call 1-888-NOT-TOO-LATE. Mm -hmm. Number too late. one eight 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 not too late And they can tell you where a pharmacy is where you can get it without a prescription. And just tell them you need the pill. You don't yeah. have to get it. And by the way, you should get a pill anyway. That's right. Can yeah. I ask one last question? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something wrong with me if I don't want to have, like, regular sex? You just, you want the anal sex only? Are you, oh, exclusively? Man, tonight we've just gotten crazy in this conversation. You know, uh, what? Are, are you multiply orgasmic? Um, yes. It's, it's like, sometimes I orgasm really hard. I don't know if but, I've ever had multiple ones. Hard? You mean you make a lot of noise? or you, No, it's do you just do? a lot of it comes out, a lot of cum, and like it, it's a good long cum. It's a good long one. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, we'd, we'd have to do it in a monkey cage, me and you, because like never get the cleaning deposit back in the apartment. Like, I, like listen, we'll, we'll, we'll do it wherever, wherever there's a floor drain and a hose bib. That's where we a go. good oil pan with her, I guess, yeah. over. Yeah, it's one of those sheets you put on the garage floor to collect the tranny fluid. And you do that during or anal sex. Okay, no, no, no. I just get excited during anal. Like, I get all wet, but okay. I never have oh, orgasms. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you keep uh, a lot of kitty litter on hand and uh, just enjoy yourself. <laughs> so so nothing, nothing is yeah. wrong with me because I don't want to have regular? Um, is there any, any anything we need to know? Um, you sexually abused or anything? I guess. Like, I used to have a family member who, like, totally used to tell me that, like, if you ever had sex before you were married, like, you were a big whore. <laughs> right. Uh, that, that's just more emotional kind was of thing. Was that your dad or your mom? No, it just uh, my mom's sister. Mom's sister, really? Uh -huh. Isn't that interesting? Look, look how that's turned out. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Auntie. Yeah, nice work. Now uh, she's the cornhole queen. Is that, <laughs> you does that yeah. constitute yeah. abuse? Yeah. It's abusive, yeah. That's really? a little. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. It's not, not overt it's abuse. It's a blanket it's not, word. It's not we call wholesale abuse. No, it's, it's <laughs> not something that we worry about causing her any real problem. Okay. I used to remember... I just remember guys talking about girls who would not let them have sex when they were like teenagers, not let them have sex vaginally, but because they were proper. Right, right. But would let them have anal sex. Have anal sex. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we decided that there should be sort of a, series, a series of planes. Yeah, you break the plane. Yeah. yeah, no planes broken. The okay sign, don't break that plane. <laughs> yeah, whatever. This plane. <laughs> True sound point, just trap. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> Melissa? Yeah. You're uh, 18? You had sex four months ago? Well, I have been since then. And oh, you've been having sex for four months? Right. All right. And I've never had an orgasm ever. Mm -hmm. and that would be normal for an 18-year-old. But what about oral sex? Well, yeah, we've had, I mean, yeah, and I've never orgasmed then either. Nothing Still there. not unusual for an 18-year-old. Female. Right. Sort of normal. Do you enjoy, do you enjoy sex? Yeah, I just don't ever feel like I'm, like, building up or anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. Are you on any medication? Uh, no. All right. Well, this is this will... Are you in love with your boyfriend? Yeah. All right. It will probably take care of itself, but 18 is a tough age to sort of hit the ground running as a female. Th things are not quite hooked up at that age yet. Yeah. For yeah. many women, for many women. Yeah. Some can have orgasm during... Uh, Oral sex, very few during intercourse, but most have, have trouble orgasm. How old's your boyfriend? He's 19. Do you think he does a good job with the oral sex? Yeah. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, it feels good, you know, like it just doesn't really, yeah. like, go anywhere, you know? Yeah. Drew, tell me if this is a grandiose thought, but, you know, we talk to these 18-year-olds uh, all night at can uh -huh. have the O with the oral. Uh -huh. I think I could give them one. All of them? Each one? No, but I think I, I, I could probably hit about 65, 70% of them. Grandiose. It is? 30%. <laughs> really? Because that, that puts 50% of the blame on the men. I, I'm putting more of that on the men. I know. I, I think I could do it. Because I think they get these guys that, you know, they got that bad teenage mustache. Oh. They, 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 may not, they may not understand the commitment Overbite, involved. and it's like they don't know to take the retainer out and stuff. A lot of them don't understand the anatomy. And they don't it's, know the anatomy. It's basic. Doesn't yeah. it have a lot to do with the girl too. I mean, isn't isn't a lot of it uh, sort of psychosomatic? I mean, if they're not really relaxed or comfortable right, right, with but, but again, the process, that's part yeah, of that's, my thing though. Like, that, here's uh, a wine cooler and a little berry white. A little and let's berry white. Absolutely, start true. weatherproofing. Right. But yeah. however, think how different that biology is than a male's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Males, it's uh, like whatever, grandpa. You know, funerals, whatever. It doesn't matter. No, but right. true. Don't yeah. you think you could pull that off? You know what I mean? Eighty percent. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Plus, you That's play the good. Dr. Drew card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the same mouth you've been hearing yeah. on the radio. <laughs> it's the <laughs> headlamp he puts on right before oh, and really yeah. gets him going. Lord have mercy. Let's go to break. All right. Let's take ourselves a uh, little break. Jason Will here from Arrested Development this Sunday, 930 <laughs> on Fox. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Thursday night, All American Rejects are going to be back in the studio. Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, in here tonight. Arrested Development, name of the show. Fox, 930 this Sunday. Big premiere. I'd like to play some uh, Germany or Florida. We had a couple. We had a question up there, and then they disappeared. So yeah, Germany or Florida. Again, this is a uh, game that was uh, conceived in uh, the writers' uh, lunch at uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and. Uh, We're just stealing it for this show. But uh, you find a crazy story that either came from Germany or Florida, and they all do. And then we guess, (laughs) Germany or Florida. And we've been 9 out of 10, basically. Yeah. This is uh, it's going to. And we'd be ten nation. out of ten if I had talked to him. Yeah, Drew talked me out of one of my Germanies. What, what happened there? I want to talk to the guy with the uh, mangled penis. Oh, okay, go ahead. All right, Chris. Yeah. You're eighteen. Yeah, I'm eighteen. Penis is I, mangled. It's it's not exactly mangled, mm-hmm. but I just been noticing it more ever since you know I've been having sex with my girlfriend, and when I went to go get STD checked, when they put the Q-tip thing inside me. Yeah. It kind of see it because it's kind of bent and it hurt really bad when it went through the side, and I, I don't really know what do you do about something like that. Oh, bogus. It's yeah. not bogus. I'm serious. Well, Man, you say the, what do you what do, do you about do? Yeah. something like that? That's bogus. What? You're bogus, kid. I'm not. No, I'm not bogus. I'm serious. Save your boguosity for the next jock who right, just fell right. off the no, cabbage no, truck. I'm, no, seriously. Listen, well, Chris. What do you mean? What do you do? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you do? Okay. You, they, what happened was a. Do you, do you think? Do you think for other people it doesn't hurt when somebody shoves a Q-tip up their penis? No. Well, not as bad as it hurts me. It. it from what I've heard, it doesn't hurt as bad. So a lot of guys, it hurts a lot. Yeah. It has nothing to do with your mangling. Well, it and until does, you've uh, it, whacked a mile on someone else's penis. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. All right. When it goes through, and since my penis is bent. It feels like it's coming out of the side that it should be just going straight. It Well, there might be some kind of stenosis. How or, far in they got to get that thing, Drew? Not that far usually, but maybe there's some know, kind of narrowing or something. Hurt. Yeah, maybe some kind of, well, again, Chris, it normally hurts, and some guys it hurts right. a lot. But hold on. this Your your question is, is why does it hurt when someone puts no, my a question stick is, up my like, penis? Is there any way of getting it straightened out? Because it is kind of embarrassing to say I have a broken penis. What happened to your penis? Well, about... A year and a half ago, I used to be into go. the paintballing thing, and a CO2 canister blew up because it was filled incorrectly. Ooh. When I went to the hospital, see, everything from, like, my belly button down to my knees was, you know, frozen. Oh. When reviving it, there was, like, they had to use warm water, and it was, like, seriously, I thought they broke it. I could crack, and it was, like, a hairline fracture through the, it wasn't, like, bone I, it's so, just, all right, so hold on, hold on a second. Your the penis doesn't have a bone. The paint, I know mine it's does. Not, the penis, I know it's not a bone, but it's the, broke. The paint, the paintball thing was a CO2 canister was overfilled? Incorrectly filled, yeah. He didn't have his gauges or anything. It was just like he lifted up the tank canister, I paid him and walked out, and it blew up like 15 minutes later. And it was down by your crotch. It was just sitting on my lap. It blew up, and uh, it was horrible. Uh, it does uh, seem like it's a little... I mean, look, if you can sue McDonald's for uh, dumping some uh, coffee on your lap. Bad. Uh, like, they, they paid for all my medical bills, and I was stupid and young. I, I could have sued the crap out of them. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes guys who uh, run paintball operations aren't exactly what you call deep pockets. <laughs> and, and it, right. Usually. Well, it was a small town. There was nowhere else you to go. You fat cat paintballers <laughs> going back up to your ivory towers in your Lear jets and stretch limos while the real people are down here. Yeah? That's right. Chris, uh, <laughs> yes, you can times. You can break, you can fracture the penis. The, oh. the, the cavernous body that fills with blood can can fracture. And there are operations to repair it. Uh, you know, we had Dr. Alter up here. He wrote this, I don't have the book in front of me, but he had a book about... 
yeah. various procedures oh, that can be done. Anything. Oh, wait, yeah, you ought to be seen. This this guy is a plastic surgeon and a urologist, and I guess that's really the combination you want if you want to get something well, like this done. Well, Chris, did you take some shrapnel? No, I it didn't. I didn't take any of that. Like the top part, it just blew kind of off and shot off. and shot the frozen compressed air. All, or or um, it was like a liquid for like a fraction of a second, and it was just it felt like there was ice all over me. It was it was horrible. Yeah, it's you nude. It's it's nitrogen. No, I wasn't yeah. nude. I was just you know wearing a t-shirt and shorts and it right. went that's straight that's that. not the right outfit for paintballing, by the way, son. <laughs> well, I wasn't you know gonna go in that. I was just filling it up so I can go back. It was like on the way back from school or something. All right, but that's where most paintballing accidents occur. It's on the way back from school. Yeah, it's not actually during the paintballing. Right. And don't wear short shorts. You ever do any uh, paintballing? No. You guys ever paintball? No, no I have not. No. It's, and, it's and now, uh, by the way, I will not. Yeah, have you heard this story? It's uh, it's it's bad news. <laughs> it really. I mean, you get huge, you get novelty bruises welts. and welts. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's exciting. It's fun to go around in a mock massacre. Yeah, not get stuff in your eyes. Not oh. into that, really. Yeah, yeah. I don't get you just, that. You just pulled some kind of like moral card on you. Yeah, yeah, what guys, that? that's bad behavior. Yeah, it's it it. Uh, here's here's uh, I've done it. I did it for a guy's bachelor party once. It's good time. It's good when you get out of when you're out of paintballs. It gets hunting hand, strippers hand to hand. With yeah, the, you know I think that was a fake story they made up a few months ago that there were uh, hunting strippers with paintballs. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's good times. True. No. Florida different. or Germany. <laughs> That's definitely Florida. Florida, yes. Florida. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Amber? Hi. You're 21? Yes. What's up? Hi. Um, I have a question about the relationship that I'm in right now. All right. And um, I've been with this guy for a year, and we have, a, like, we've, we're just dating. We're not boyfriend and girlfriend, which has been fine with me. But the other night we had a big blow up, and um, he told me that he doesn't think that he can ever have feelings for me. And he knows that that I'm that I love him and that I care about him, but he doesn't think that he can ever have the same feelings for me because Amber, Amber, yeah. stop. stop. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about indifference? Wouldn't that be a feeling? Yeah. What? What? No, it's a lack of feeling. Oh, it is. See? Why do you start out with uh, "We're not boyfriend and girlfriend, and that's fine with me" when it clearly is not at all fine with you? Yeah. And uh, by the way, all the girls we talk to that are in a sort of maintenance type holding pattern with guys who claim it's uh, part their decision and it's just how they want it are always full of crap. Full of crap. Why do you start with that? Why do you do that to yourself? Yeah. You're into this guy and he's not that you're, into you're you. You're just saying you're in love with him and he is not in love with you. And if that's not okay, he's never going to be. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. Well, because he's yeah. only had one girlfriend before me. And he, Amber, yeah, Amber, look, guys, don't all, do that. All that stuff. He's, first of all, if he's only had one girlfriend, he should be clinging on to you with both his uh, geeky hands, uh, number one. <laughs> he should be desperate for you. Number two, all these things. Well, he's working and going to school right now. Yeah. That's all BS. All reasons. Look, when you're into somebody, you're into everything. them. You drop and, everything. And if you can see him once a week, you see him once a week. And if you see him once a year, you see him once and, a year. And whatever guys you do can not do. convert. You can't convert a guy. No. No. They and, they, and the quickest way to get this guy into you is to have a very healthy level of indifference about whether that, he's going to be around or that's not. That's the right. only move. That's the right. only move. But Fake it till you make it. That's not going to work. you right. got to know in your heart it's not going to work. Guys will not change. There's it, one time when a guy found out the girl's dad was Paul Anka. <laughs> <laughs> he saw some of that money down the road. He knew he wasn't getting any younger, and he stepped in and, and really made a commitment at no, that but, point. But that's very rare. Very, very rare. rare. But Very this right. this girl claimed that she started by saying that and I'm sorry I forgot her name the caller's name Amber. but Amber Amber but a Amber claimed that that she was in, she wanted to talk about this relationship she's in she and she's clearly not in a relationship not like, she went from we're not boyfriend girlfriend that's absolutely fine with me but we had a blow up I told him how much I'm in love with him yeah and he told me he could never be in love with me of course not he's never she didn't say that. <laughs> That's well, a paraphrase. We've known each other for we've known each other for like seven oh, years. Oh, well, that's different. Then that's it totally does, it different. It doesn't matter. Totally Amber, if he's into you, he's into you, and if he's not, he's not, and you have to know he's not. And that's it. He's you not going on. to convert. It's not going to so, happen. So I should just walk you, away. And just you're leave done. Alone? You're yeah, done. Yeah, if you truly walk away, honestly walk away. Don't be surprised to see him right behind you. You know, yeah, but don't. Uh, but then, don't, I mean, don't, but don't look turn for it. But it dance. could be a nice. It's your only move, but it's the only possible hand you can play. Right. 
And and, and, and by the way, the argument of, well, I've, I've got a year invested into this. It's, it's just, like you saying, I have a year invested in a horrible job. Yeah. It's all the more reason to get I mean, out tomorrow. Yeah. A year invested in the Nazi party. It's right. so bad. Right. It's time to move on. She yeah. never actually mentioned that. But, you know, like even, even if she does the whole thing where she walks away and says, all right, I'm not into it, and she's just kind of playing it yeah. and decides that she's going to see if he comes. She sh- and if he does come, she still shouldn't. Go back. Around, go back because he'll go to the same, same thing. Mode. Will happen, same right? thing, exactly. Yeah. He'll go back to the same. Mode. I hope a friend. All right, what listening. about what about this week on Hack, <laughs> where he has to infiltrate in order to infiltrate a white supremacist organization? Hack. In what? order for Amber's boyfriend to come back, she's gonna have to become a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Always funny, Drew. Dustin. Dustin, you're 23. Yeah. All right, you have a Florida or Germany for us? I do. All right, go. Sorry. Okay, this uh, this older woman fell asleep with her TV on, and in the morning when she woke up, they had that program on that they have uh, a fake fire going, or like it's you know it's a program of a fire that you can keep on on your TV, so it looks mm-hmm. like you have a fireplace when you really don't. Mm-hmm. A fireplace, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, she woke up and she thought her TV was on fire, so she called mm-hmm. the fire department and they all came down and made a big hoopla mm-hmm. about it, and then. Came in and turned off her TV for. Her. All right, let's, okay. uh, now let's that, examine this one. Only a very old person would do that. Very old person, Florida, and w- mm. but I don't know if they're running that here. Yeah, I don't know. If, I've not seen that. That sounds like Poland. And also, <laughs> I'm just playing the odds though, where there are lots of old people. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, though, uh, the fire department immediately getting down there, Florida. No, no, that sounds more like German. It sounds like efficient. Very efficient German. German. Germany. But Germany. there's no old people in Germany because all that whole generation population was, was killed off, right? Uh, Logan's the, run style? Or? No, yeah, oh, World oh, War II. Oh, yeah. when we found them? Yeah, so there's really, the only people there are only 60 years old, right? No, they got a couple no. of geezers in there. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen <laughs> it on a couple, A couple head. Yeah, a couple of geese. I know that countries have, that have ambulances I'm, that I'm, still go, ee, uh, ee, uh, <laughs> get through right. that thing. What, what are we going to go on? Drew's thinking Florida. I, I think we're thinking Germany just because we, we don't yeah. know what this channel is. Right, I'll, I'll go with you then. We're going all Germany? All right. all right. Dustin? Yeah. Florida or Germany? Germany. Yeah. Got it. Got it. See, Drew? You, you can it. never listen to you. Always that fire that. show is only syndicated internationally. That's right. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, Dustin? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Good time. All right. Uh, break time. Oh, break time? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little uh, break. And Drew will be urinating in where? Florida or Germany? Germany. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Will Arnett is here. Jason Bateman is here. Arrested Development. Name of the new show on Fox this Sunday, big premiere, 9.30. I command everyone within the sound of my voice to go watch it. That's a wide stretch. Yeah. We'll be not watching it because uh, we're going to be here. But uh, You've got the TiVo. I got the TiVo. So we will be watching it. Get yourself a season pass. Right. Yeah, that's what you got to do. And under options, you keep till delete. I bet we're, we're all already on your wish lists, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Really three green thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, oh, we got another Germany or Florida. It's only guys calling. Dare we? Now. Yeah, yeah. Come on. All right. Why not? Anthony? Hello? You're 19? Yeah. You got a Germany or Florida for us? Yes, I do. Um, should I just go into it now? Sure. A uh, man went into a bank and attempted to use, like, I'm not sure, like, the amount of cocaine, but, like, it wasn't over, like, a kilo as a collateral to uh, get a loan for a car. I think we're all, we're all, we're all there. Sounds we're there. like the panhandle. Florida. Sounds yeah. like Florida. Yeah. Anthony? <laughs> Should I tell you? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't leave that on one up good enough, but, yeah, it was Florida. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good time. Adam, you might get the T-shirt. You know, yeah. Uh, like, my sister used to work at this restaurant. And uh, mm-hmm. Sausalito uh, called Sa- Sailor's Landing. Uh-huh. And he went in there, and uh, I don't know if you remember that or not, but you and Jimmy. Yeah, yes. I do. On, on the wharf? Yeah. Yeah, I remember That's her. Sweet, huh? Yeah, I did. Jimmy and I teamed her in the hotel. 
Oh, my God. She was high. It's like, oh, that's good, Adam. Thank you. Jimmy and I used to go on these, uh, we just go out teaming. All the time. Yeah. hogging? Uh, yeah, we go hogging. We'd just be like, you seen the man show? You seen the man show? You seen the man show? Yeah, no, no. Like, no. we get like, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. But eventually, they'd be like, I think I heard of it. Uh, okay. Yeah. DP time. <laughs> You're in. Yeah. yeah. we tag. we do that. We'd like tag yeah. in and tag out. They'd have to become. Yeah. yeah that's right. They'd have to become rapists. <laughs> no, I do remember uh, doing that. And I do remember going in there with uh, Jimmy. I think that was our second uh, honeymoon. And, uh, you and, Jimmy. I, and I do remember talking to somebody and, uh, you know, eating uh, eating some oyster crackers and drinking some uh, some anchor steams. All right. You ready to rock here, Drew? Yeah. Let's talk to Nick, who's 23. Nick? Yeah. You got a question? Yes, I do. First of all, Adam, you're my hero. And Dr. Drew, you're a genius. Adam is your hero. Well, that leaves Will and me. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the show, guys. It sounds there like clarity. Nick, Bless you. That's Nick, right. that there is it is. Right. good, swift. That's great. You, you'll go far in the yeah. business tree. That's right. Yeah. What's up there, Nick? All right, I got a couple uh, masturbation questions for you. First of all. Mm-hmm. Um, this is for you, obviously, Will. <laughs> Here we go. First, um, I, I don't use lube when I masturbate. I was wondering if that might have any effect, like if that might cause like rashes in the future or something like that. Not using lubrication. No, that's fine. No, it's fine. Okay. And also... Poison ivy would. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second question is, I heard somewhere, it might have been even on the show a while back, but um, I heard that if you masturbate in the same position all the time, it makes it harder to orgasm during intercourse. That's that the true? Corolla problem. The Corolla. <laughs> yeah. Because, Adam, you you do it. Uh, mis- Corolla does it missionary style well, here, right? I, no, the I, way is... I, se- I sexually, but I beat off standing on my head. <laughs> but you mentioned a, how you... Just a disaster. One of the worst ideas I ever had. But, you know, what are you going to do? You know, it's like you pick a major, and that's it. I started when I was 15. I stand by it. But you actually get on your belly though, and and you make love to your hand, right? Yeah, no, 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 that, no. I I do it. I do. I sex. I say, do a stand. Have you ever had? You ever got jizz up your nose, Drew? Uh, no. It's horrible. It gets in your. You lungs. gotta wear one of those swimming clamps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really. It's like doing water ballet. But uh, yeah, if you here's the thing. A lot of guys they get used to beating off in the shower. Let's or in a say, certain they're, position. They're standing up or they're laying down with their feet out in front of them and their toes pointed and they're locked out and whatever. Right. And the next thing you know, they're on top of a woman right. and their penis is confused. It's like they're nuts of vertigo now. They they're they're not used to being in the position that they're in. The 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 sac gyroscope is thrown way off by this. And if you beat off like if you start beating off at thirteen and you don't get your first girlfriend until like nineteen, you'll have had several million jack <laughs> sessions right. and now you're in a totally different position. Right. That's why I'm I move it up. I, I shake it up. I do it standing. I do it line. I do it on the run sometimes. <laughs> car wheels. <laughs> car wheels in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nick. Yeah. You have a girlfriend? I don't right now. But you don't right now. Right there now. go the masturbation frequencies. Yeah. Twenty three. Yeah, usually like once a day. I try. You in school now? No, actually, I work full time. What kind of work do you do? Uh, well, it's kind of hard to explain. You like accounting type stuff. Accounting. Mm-hmm. I work What's for your book, bookkeeping. Yeah. What, are you Vietnamese? No, I'm not. What's your What's nationality? Your I'm you have some Caucasian white. Really? You have an accent. You yeah. sound. I do. Sound like something. A little bit of an accent. Oh, no, I'm, I'm regular Caucasian. All right. Oh, okay. Well, that's just funny meter. All right. Well, uh, good Jack and. Uh, and good times. And good times. You, you find yourself a girl, right? What's that? Okay. Let's uh, keep it moving. Drew, you want to sock the mic? I or did, keep did, going? Done. Are you got done, right? and done. Okay, because we do one each hour now. Yeah. The one at 10 o'clock hour, and then we do oh, another. I, I almost missed one this hour. Yeah, it's close. <laughs> Emily? Uh-huh. We'll probably have to discuss you punching the mic, though, no. before. It's <laughs> the first time we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Emily? Yes? You're 23. Yes. What's up? Nothing. All right. Yeah. Next caller. Next caller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There All right. Go. That's it for you, huh? No. Are you high? What's up Hello? with you? What are you? Are you angry? Oh yeah. Yeah. What happened? Well, who who screwed you over? A guy. Your dad. Where's your dad? Inside. You. Inside. <laughs> are you inside on the porch? My, oh, inside a prison. Where is he? No, inside my parents' house right now. All right. And uh, <laughs> which he returned not, to after t- 14 years of absence. That's not your. That's not your stepdad. That's in there. That's your real dad. 
That's my real dad, yes. Uh, all right. Never beat on you or verbally abused you? No. Nice all right. caller. No, just uh, has decided to uh, take my ex-husband's side. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Man, you guys are good. Sounds you guys are really angry. good. Took your ex-husband's side with what? You guys divorced and yeah. what? He's, he, we're divorced. Mm-hmm. He and just, why did... He takes his side over everything that I... About, like what? Give us an example. Um, child support. That you should be paying for child support? No. He thinks that I don't deserve child support. Your, your dad? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, what... Uh, okay. Well, what do you want? And listen, I... I, I, I you, you're you're obviously a pain in the ass, and you're angry. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's it's abundantly clear. It, it's two two seconds it comes across. All right, I blame work, work I blame your dad for that, by the way, and possibly your mom. Whatever it is, oh, wow. you, you're mom freaked thing. out. This oh, your mom. Thing, yeah. what, what kind of shape's your mom in? She's good. She's fine. All right. So, what's the question tonight? Um, I left a note on a car's ga- a guy's car, mm-hmm. and to let him know my feelings and. It's been four days now, and I want to know what that means. Well, who is this guy? A guy that I like. Okay, I'm in love with. Do you do you work with the guy, or do you go to school with him or something? No, he lives right next to where my parents work. Does he know you exist? Uh-huh. Do you have a relationship with him? Uh-huh. What's the nature of that relationship? Um, so far, sex. You've been having sex with a guy regularly? Mm-hmm. And you, you, you had to leave a note on his No, show? and she now poured out her heart saying that she's in love with him and all that stuff, and now he's, like, freaked out. Not exactly. Was... Not exactly. I just told him how I felt. I In the beginning, I told him I didn't want a relationship when I really did. Yeah, well, why do you do that? Why do women do that? That's just so silly. Huh? Because of my ex-husband. No, you, you do it because you know he doesn't have feelings for you. And you don't want to get hurt, but you want to be near him anyway. Okay. Does he know? Does he guys know do the not ex-husband? do not eventually develop feelings. They don't. Right. They right. Either have them at the beginning or they don't. And if All they right. don't, they aren't going to get them. All right. So here's here's the thing, Emily. You have a kid, right? Uh huh. And you're going through uh, a, a new divorce, and you're 23. Actually, it's been three and a half years now. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, you're not living at home. You're living away from home and. No, I live with my parents, unfortunately. Oh, you do. Uh, All right, so you, here's the thing. I, you just don't sound like you're in great shape to be in a relationship right now, and you're probably dumping whatever feelings you have and whatever ang- anger you have, whatever emotions you have into a guy's lap. And guys feel it when you're showing up with a whole hamper full of dirty clothes, yeah. and we get a little freaked out, and we'll, we'll bone you, but we don't want to deal with the hamper. <laughs> and we got to feel like that hamper's uh, been lightened just a little bit. And you're freaking the guy. And then you went for the bum rush with the note on the car. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just focus on the kid. Get yourself a little better. Get out of the house. Stop being so angry. And then look for a relationship. Yeah. All right. It's never going to happen. We'll be right back. All right. Wait a minute. We have to have uh, Will read a uh, quick uh, this week on Hack before we go. This week on Hack. To catch a terrorist, Hack will have to become... A rapist. (laughs) (laughs) Always funny. Always funny. Arrested Development, uh, everybody. Sunday nights, 9.30, right after Hack Mm -hmm. on uh, Fox. (laughs) Guys, fantastic. Come back anytime. That was fun. Thank you. That was great, man. And uh, until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. In order to reach these kids, Hack will have to become a rapist. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.